Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and we love talking about public relations and storytelling. We're honored to be joined by Julia Bonner. She's the founder and president of Pierce Public Relations. Julia, how are you doing? I'm well, Jeremy. Looking forward to talking to you. Absolutely. The world of public relations and PR, when you talk about being able to tell stories and build brands, that's your world for sure. But let's start with a little context and background. Give us some background for launching Pierce Public Relations. Yeah, so I um, started my career in New York and moved back um, and actually opened an office of our New York firm for about a year, realized I could do it myself, and then subsequently launched Pierce Public Relations. We're now in our eighth year, and it has been an amazing um, journey based in Nashville, but working with clients really all over the country, Um, and it's been a lot of fun. When you talk about the name Pierce, give us some uh, symbolism, some background on the name. So when I was founding the business, of course, one of the big questions is always, what are you going to name it? Um, And I, at the time, my brother was an officer in the army and Pierce is his middle name. And so the reason I chose that is really because uh, we have a very close relationship. He's a person of high integrity, a a lot of commitment and dedication to the things that he cares about. And I really wanted our business to reflect those qualities that I admire about him. And so we've stayed really true to that. We use those as our sort of guiding uh, points when we think about our work and our relationships with our clients and each other. And it's just been a really great way to center our business um, as we continue to grow. So when we talk about public relations, there's so many nuances and sides to public relations. And so you've got the storytelling, the media side and the exposure side. You have a little bit of crisis management too that goes in. So how do you define the world of PR and what you all do? Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, it touches a lot of things. Hopefully crisis isn't always part of the plan, but it definitely happens. Um, Really what we do and what our clients come to us for is to build their brands and raise their profiles. There are so many companies out there who are doing really cool things, but they just don't have maybe the expertise in-house or the experience to tell their story. And really kind of like you said in the beginning is this is the telling your story matters so much. It's a way to connect with people. People want to do business with businesses whose stories that they can relate to and really feel like those businesses are, you know, doing good, making an impact. And so we help those businesses bring their stories forward and make that happen. Yeah. I tell people all the time, regardless of what business you're in, we're all in the trust business. And so it's all about relationships and you know, it's all about doing business with those you trust and those stories play a very integral role in that. And so when you're sitting down with a prospective client and you're assessing the situation, what are the questions you like to ask? What are the things that you're looking at to give you a pulse of where they stand now versus obviously where they want to be moving forward? Yeah, well, a lot of that, we actually have a really thorough sort of kickoff process where we ask a lot of those questions and everything from, you know, business goals to what does it look like from a PR and marketing standpoint when you think about success a year from now, but really it's getting to the core of what makes them different and unique. And then we look at and really audit where, what where does that stack up against others in the industry or others sort of in their geography and really help define their positioning so that when we do go out to proactively tell the story, we know that it's going to resonate and it's going to be different and it's going to honor the, you know, the core of the company and really what they are looking to do as a business. What are some of the things that you really think kind of stand out for companies? Because, you know, you hear people, well, we're the best. And so it's like, well, everybody says that. So what are the things that you kind of look at with your team to really draw out those elements? But maybe in other words, you're starting to peel back the onion and get to the layers of really what do differentiate organizations from each other. So what are the things that you're looking for on your end? Oh, gosh, you know, it really ranges by client. I mean, some of it, there are really busy, you know, innovative services or the way that they provide a service is different or a product. A lot of times it comes back to the team is who do you have? You know, what are those people sort of look like? Do you have diversity? How does that again kind of stack up against the competition? 
Um, cool things internally. How are they involved in the community? You know, where are their, their people involved? What do they do beyond the things that you might expect? Um, and always sort of what's coming down the pike, like what are the new and unique things that might be happening over the next one to five years and how can we plan for those? Um, so it's really looking at a lot of different places and sometimes, you know, you find that a cool story they haven't really even realized is before them and then you hear it, you're like, gosh, people should know about that. Um, and so when we obviously hear those kinds of things, we're trying to flag all of that as well, because those can be amazing opportunities just to demonstrate the ethos of a company um, and really sort of what makes them different. And I want to take that and carry that forward, because when you talk about working with a company and, you know, to your point, you hear that, and, oh, that's an amazing story that needs to be told. And, you know, they don't even think about it. On the other side, sometimes it's like, well, they think it's an amazing story, but they have to kind of shift it a little bit to get the media exposure because the media says, oh, that's a little too self-serving. So how do you kind of balance some of those dynamics to get media exposure when it comes to really finding an authentic good story that then the media is going to pick up on? So in other words, there's kind of a magic secret of how do I take that story and craft it so that people want to tell it in a larger forum in a larger way? Yeah, well, it's a great point because we have a lot of, you know, this this is really cool or this happened internally, but it's not something that necessarily people outside of your business would care about. And so part of it is we are, we are viewed as a trusted advisor. So when there's really not a story, we are candid about that because there's no point in setting that expe expectation if we can't bring it to life. But that being said, oftentimes there are a lot of other things that we can do with that. Is it in the blog? Is it on social media? Um, this would be cool for maybe a newsletter or something to really demonstrate, you know, bring it, not let it go by the wayside, but not everything is newsworthy. And especially with the way that the media works now, I mean, you really have to have a story of a good voice and some proof points. And if you don't have those things, there might just be a better way to share that than trying to expend energy and resources by making it, you know, a media story. I'll give you the leeway on if you want to uh, say the name of the company, you know, your client, but give me some fun, either a fun project or some fun projects that you've had a chance to recently work on. Oh my gosh. Well, honestly, and this is, this is true, although it might sound kind of cheesy is I think all of our work is really exciting. Um, we, a lot of our clients are in uh, selling business to business sort of services. So um, we do a lot of kind of, you know, professional services and things like that. And even though it's not necessarily restaurants or retail or something flashy, there is so much cool um, stuff that these businesses do that with a little creativity can really, really change how they're perceived in the market. And I find that to be a lot of fun. The strategy behind that still gives me a lot of fulfillment. But some cool things that we've done recently, we do a, the Nashville Film Festival, which is always a lot of fun, getting to tell the stories of not just the films, but the filmmakers and all the people involved that make that happen. Uh, we work with some of the performing arts organizations in town and those always have, there's always unique elements and things that we can kind of tease out and share with, uh, share with the public there. So it's all, it's a mix, but I would say there's, there's not ever a boring day and truly all of it still excites me. Nice. When you talk about working with the nonprofits and the purpose side, talk about community engagement for you and your team. Yeah. I think that being invested in the community is just good business. And to us, we really view it as a business imperative. So from a leadership standpoint, we really require that we find, you know, ways to meaningfully engage in the community. And for a lot of our client programs, that's part of what we're looking at is where is your leadership team showing up? Are they involved in, you know, boards? Does the organization, you know, how are they engaging with nonprofits? How are we talking about the work that we're doing? Um, and so for us, you know, we have people on our team involved in a lot of different things across the community. So whether it's leadership programs or volunteering with nonprofits, we've got a few who serve on boards. It's something that really is an expectation and that we view as sort of a KPI when it comes to performance for our team. Um, and it really is doing good is doing, you know, is good business um, as well. And we've seen that work in many different ways. 
when you look at the landscape and everything that's going on, you have all the buzzwords, you know, that we're seeing nationally, internationally, inflation, recession, job shortages, supply chain issues, all of those things. How does that play a role in your world of PR? Yeah. Well, one thing we saw that really drove this home during the pandemic is the companies that in these periods of uncertainty, and we're certainly kind of in one now, where it's a question of what's going to happen, what will next year look like? The companies that continue to uh, push forward on their PR and marketing efforts actually gained more ground and share of voice because so many went quiet because they didn't know what was going to happen. So they just said, let's put this on pause. But the truth is, I mean, these these. Um, businesses that continue to um, push forward, we're, we're getting 2x almost the visibility of those that just stopped and said, we want to wait and see what happens. Because in a crowded market, it's one of many voices and there's just a lot of noise. And so I would just say encouraging businesses to whatever degree that they have the ability and resources to commit is to, to not pull all the way back and to really you know, continue to make that investment because you can come out on the other side of whatever is ahead in a much stronger position than if you're restarting in another year and you've lost all the ground and momentum that you could have gained. Yeah, I think that's valuable insight on just standing out in what was a crowded market. And as those go quiet, you have much more of a platform and a louder voice to speak from, you know, so to speak. Um, so I, I like that aspect. I also look at it too, almost like, you know, you hear what the investment advice is. Now is the best time to, to double right. down because you'll get the 10X like you're talking about return. And so I think from a business standpoint, looking at it from both sides of that equation of now's the time to continue to pour in because you're going to be able to accelerate coming out and remaining connected to your audience. And I think we saw that with the pandemic is when you disconnect, you lose all that momentum that you've generated over the years. And so it's harder to then restart. And so by maintaining the connectivity and even doubling down where you can, you actually come out, you know, accelerating out in a good way to build your business. I couldn't agree more. And I would take that just one slight step further, which is for some businesses that have had more of a robust external sort of effort in terms of their communication, when they pull back, people fill in the blanks and think something's wrong um, or something's changing and we don't know what it is. So, but uncertainty often creates, you know, even more challenges um, because if you go quiet, people are going to fill in the blank for you in terms of what they think is happening. And so c- maintaining connection and really staying um, communicative with your key audiences and staying visible is important because the uh, the other side of it could actually be detrimental if you lose total focus on that. Yeah, that's that's great insight. So talk about social media and how this plays a role. Maybe give some tips around social media for organizations because I think social media sometimes can be hard for companies to kind of wrap their hands around. And I love the fact you mentioned sometimes the best place for some of the storylines is actually like on a blog or through social media. So talk about kind of social media in in a broad lens, obviously, but from your perspective. Yeah, I think that it is a great tool. It's part of all of our programs because um, it is a great place to get visibility for the things that your company might be doing. I would say from just a strategic standpoint, the most important thing and one thing we always look at is really who are you talking to on each platform? One thing we see companies do that sometimes can be a mistake is posting the exact same thing across all the places where they have a, you know, have a, uh, an account. And it's just good to know. I mean, on LinkedIn or on Instagram, or if you have TikTok, those audiences are all really different. And so thinking about how you're tailoring the content to really have an impact on that platform is super important. But I think companies now understand the value that social media and the power that it can have. Um, and so also just being aware of what you're posting and when and current events, because another thing that sometimes happens is people have things planned and they've got good social people internally who've got these calendars that they're running, but really being mindful. I mean, there's so much going on in the world today that if not uh, done with intention and a lot of care could make you look potentially tone deaf in an environment where, you know, there are a lot of people who are in the, you know, in, a, in the face of uncertainty, have to make challenging decisions or uh, changes to, to the things that they have traditionally been doing or known for. And so just 
making sure you've got a really good team around your social strategy and that you're creating content that's going to resonate with the people that matter. Yeah, that's a great tip right there. Give me one more for you kind of as a, a you know, a speaker, so to speak. Give me one more of your favorite tips. Oh my gosh. Well, I would say from a speaking standpoint, you know, the couple things that are always best, I always um, like to know audience, you know, who you're talking to. And that goes really for any external channel. So whether it's social media, you're speaking to an audience, you're sharing your blog posts, it's just get to know whoever is on the other side of that as best as you can. So you can make sure it's relevant and impactful. And then you know, speaking is a little bit different, but rehearse. I don't think anything should be done on the fly, even if you are a gifted speaker. I mean, it really is a gift and it's something that you can practice and hone and learn, but the best speakers really do practice their stuff and they know it sort of forwards and back. So uh, the way we translate that into our other work, written work, is just the editing process. You take it really seriously, making sure that things are buttoned up. And I would say the same goes for speaking as well. It's just make sure you're prepared even if you've done it before preparation is key and i think that is a piece of pr when you talk about ceos executives and those who are out business owners representing their brand their business when you talk about going to events public speaking that plays an integral role and, and people sometimes you know kind of leave that to the side it's like that plays a, a really prominent role in you being the face of the organization and representing the brand well and so all of this plays into, you know, PR and everything we're talking about with public relations. So wrap up on your end with where we can go to carry these conversations forward. So website, social media, where do we go to plug in on your end? Yeah. Um, we'd love for you to come find us at Pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E hyphen P-R dot com. Uh, we have a lot on the topics we talked about today, blogs and things that hopefully you will find valuable and truly they're meant to be very applicable no matter what stage of uh, business you're in or how developed your PR and marketing function is. So I encourage you to go there, take all you can from what we've got on the website. You can also find us on LinkedIn um, where we share a lot of that content and then in Instagram as well at Pierce PR. Um, but yeah, go to the website. Everything is there. All our social channels are there and we'd love for you to connect with us and get in touch. Absolutely. Well, Julia, thank you for all you do. Thank you for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.